So the basics of brain anatomy, here's a head, we have a nose, two ears, and then we have a right side of the brain and a left side of the brain, just like we have two thumbs, two hands, and two feet. And everything is supposed to be very symmetric. And the brain is folding inside and outside. There's the right side and left side of the brain. So when we talk about the brain, it's not that we have brain cells everywhere, but it's in a nice, very organized ribbon on the surface of the brain going in and out with all the folds. And again, just recognize there's a lot more folds in our brain, though in a 24-week brain, it almost looks just like what I'm drawing you here. And then we have clusters of brain cells deep in the center of our brain. The rest of this entire empty space is what we call white matter, because in a premature brain and even in a full-term baby, this area is where the future telephone wires between brain cells will be laid down, but have not actually begun even in a full-term baby. These other areas are of brain cells deep in the center of the brain are like little command control centers. So these two structures are what we call the basal ganglia. And this is the control panel for motor function. So this is one of the major control centers in the brain for motor function. And for example, with Parkinson's disease, that involves those uh, clusters of brain cells. But a very, very important area of the brain is this particular control panel. This is the master control panel of our brain. So even if the rest of your brain is not injured, if this thalamus is injured, it is like knocking out the control panel, the electrical control panel in your house. Even if the wiring in your house is correct, it will not work if the electricity from the power plant can't get to, to that wiring in your house because the thalamus is injured. So in a premature baby, you're likely to get injury in these white matter, the, where the telephone wires, the scaffolding for the telephone wires are. In a term baby, you're more likely to get injury to what these clusters of brain cells are, what we call gray matter. Because again, since they have more brain cells than telephone wires, they look grayish in comparison to the areas that have no brain cells and are just gonna be future telephone wires. Now this is one way to view the brain. The other, another way to view the brain is from looking at from the side. So I like to think of the brain as sort of like a mushroom. You have a cap part of the mushroom. This is the part of the brain that we think about when we, talk, we say the brain. It's the part of the brain that you're walking, talking, and doing math, making good decisions and bad. Then you have the stock part of the brain that we call the brainstem. And this is what the brain sits on. And so this area of the brainstem, this area called the brainstem, is extremely important because this is what's controlling all the parts of our body that our brain does not consciously. We don't have to be thinking about how to breathe, how to have a bowel movement, because this is the part of the brain that is doing that activity. So as you can imagine, you can have injury up here and may still have a um, good function quality of life, but if you injure any of this part of the brainstem or the structures that sit right on top of the th brainstem, which actually happens to be the thalamus, that master control panel that we talked about earlier. So we have an additional structure right behind the uh, brainstem at the back of our brain, and this structure is called the cerebellum. It is involved in coordinating motor function. It's such that uh, as walking that straight line for the drunk driving test or reaching for a pencil and paper. Um, and therefore is very uh, involved in motor coordination. And then obviously this brainstem then leaves the head to become the spine. So these are the general regions of the brain. 
um, in, in terms of the whole brain and not just the part of the brain that you walk and talk and think with. Within the brain itself, there are different areas of the brain that do different functions. But in terms of talking about brain injury in immature infants, usually it tends to be a more diffuse um, or a very scattered process, and it's probably more helpful uh, to understand these broad areas because, again, injury to the thalamus or your brain stem can be quite devastating, just like injury to your spine can be devastating. Whereas you can tolerate a certain amount of injury to the brain, depending on the location, still have quite a lot of, of function intact.